We've done it again. Paul Warren and his merry men have won on Boxing Day. They beat Wigan Athletic 1-0 at Wigan Athletic. What an impressive performance that was. Shall we take a look at the game? Early on in the game, Curtis Nelson struck with a header from a Tom Barcazen cross in the 19th minute to be precise. This is Derby's first Boxing Day fixture in around three years and their previous one was at Wigan Athletic 2. This one ended quite differently with Derby picking up all three points at the DW Stadium. The referee was Thomas Parsons. Derby made a couple of changes heading into the game. Joe Ward was dropped to the bench for Ryan Niambi and Tyrese Fauna was dropped for Kane Wilson to enter the squad. Derby lined up in a 4-2-3-1 formation, looking a bit like what you can see on the screen right now. Wigan, they lined up in a 3-4-3 system, as you can see there. Humphreys started the game. There's no sign of Pierce, but Callum Lang was on the left-hand side. Charlie White was also not included in their match day squad. It's a busy period, this festive period, so please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to keep up to date with all my content. The game was a game that Derby would usually lose. A, a tough, hard-fought win. It's one of those ones that last year you would have seen us concede two late on, or we would have drew in the 90th minute or something like that, but it was very different yesterday. There was full confidence, and you just didn't feel like we was gonna concede, although Wigan did have their chances. We also had chances to put ourselves miles in the lead. Collins had a really good one. Bark Hazen had one just into the start of the second half. Fuzzy did put the ball in the back of the net, but unfortunately it was pulled back for a foul. Later on in the game, Sonny Bradley had came on to try and shore up the back four, turn it into a back five and just shut down anything Wigan attempt. But he then got injured in the act and Callum Elder replaced him late on. <laughs> Liam Thompson was a missed from the squad this weekend, but it was more to do with fitness than anything else. Liam Thompson is fit, he hasn't picked up another injury, but he just wasn't ready to come on should Max Bird or Conor Horahan or what, any of the other midfielders suffered an early injury. So uh, Paul Warren made the decision to drop him entirely, but he was in Wigan with the squad warming up preparing as he usually would for the game. Shall we now take a look at the league table? You can see it over here, but let's get it up in full. So as we can see here, Derby sit in fourth position after the recent round of fixtures. Again, I think we are unbeaten in eight games. We face Oxford next. There'll be a video out tomorrow previewing that game. Oxford find themselves in fifth place. If we scroll down, that win against Wigan sees them fall to 19th place. They are four points ahead of Reading in 21st and haven't won in five games. As we can see by Derby's current position, they are edging ever closer to the top two and even Pompey. They are six points away from Pompey and two points away from Peterborough. Derby do have a game in hand on Peterborough. And we also play Peterborough on the 1st of January. Bolton are similar to us. They have a game in hand on Peterborough, but we're on equal games. Bolton's at points differential can only be accounted to that game earlier in the season. Oxford United yesterday picked up another win. There was only two losses in the... There was only one loss, sorry, in the top six. And that was Portsmouth who lost. Peterborough who drew. And Derby build a bit of a bigger gap to 7th and 8th. It's two points to seventh, and I believe it is now eight points to eight. Derby will be looking to make the most of their opportunities this coming week. Obviously, Oxford next, that, that is a massive game for Derby. And then Peterborough after, that is huge. If Peterborough lose to Barnsley, who they play uh, in a couple of days, that could make that fixture on the first very, very interesting. As we know... Derby beat Peterborough early this season and Derby also lost to Oxford earlier this season. So it's going to be massive. Let's take a look at the fixtures then and let's see how teams got on and what we should expect. So the big shock early doors was obviously the loss that Portsmouth faced at Bristol Rovers. They fell to a 2-1 defeat, losing them three points in that battle at the top of the table. Derby closed in three more points. Blackpool dropped three points to Burton Albion. 
That's Burton Albion's first win since I believe the middle of October. Cheltenham Town beat Shrewsbury 2 0. Exeter City won 1 0 at home to Wickham Wanderers. Fleetwood and Carlisle drew 1 1. Lincoln City lost 1 0 to Bolton Wanderers. Oxford United beat Cambridge 2 1. Peterborough dropped two points, drawing 2 2 late on at Reading. Barnsley won 3 2 at Port Vale. Stevenage battered Northampton 3 0. And Derby pulled away with a hard fought victory at Wigan Athletic. So, after a few really impressive performances from Derby County, they finally stopped giving away penalties. It was really good to see yesterday that Derby were able to fight and win their battles in the game, be able to take home all three points after a long journey to Wigan. It was nice to see Tom Barkhazen get himself another assist. I think that is three or four contributions in the past four games, something which we've really been missing from our wide players. That still gives Paul Warren something to think about in January, but is it something that is going to be majorly on his mind? Nathaniel Mendes Lang, still effective yesterday, but not quite creating those chances or scoring the goals, but he did what was necessary to make sure we won the game. Obviously, Sonny Bradley suffered a facial injury, so will he be available for the game on the 29th against Oxford United? I'm not quite sure, but we will find out. Callum Elder came onto the pitch late on. He'll be looking to get some more minutes on the 29th against Oxford, but I don't think you can make many changes considering the run of form we're on. We also found out yesterday that Ryan Nyambi would be leaving Derby, not as a club. He's just leaving for, I believe it's the African Cup of Nations with Namibia after he has recently signed a new contract. He's signed a contract at Derby till 2025, keeping him for the end of this season and next season. He'll be away for quite a while with Namibia as the African Cup of Nations can take I think it's around four to six weeks. So we probably won't see him for about a month after January. But hopefully, I hope he does well with Namibia. But I also hope that they get knocked out in the group stages so that we can see him. It's going to be very interesting to see how they do something. I'll be keeping a close eye on. So let's hope we can get six points out of the next six games and head into January with a good battle on our hands for automatic promotion. Can we do it? Can we bring in the right players? Let me know down in the comments. Make sure you like, comment and subscribe and I'll catch you in my next video, which will be an Oxford United preview. Make sure to go and find me on TikTok, pictured here, and Twitter, pictured here. These are the places where I'll keep you all up to date with all my upcoming videos and my thoughts and feelings around the Formula One and football weekend.